Hey guys, this is Fabian Holland, and this is Final Whistle. Hello and welcome back to the Final Whistle, brought to you by the Rugby Connection Podcast. Now, Super Rugby season is just around the corner, so we thought we'd go down under. And this guest is very special. He is Holland-born, played for New Zealand under-20s. He is one of the next big things coming fresh out of Dunedin and the Highlanders. It's Fabian Holland. Fabian, thank you so much for coming on. How are you getting on? Ah, cheers. Thank you. Um, absolute pleasure to be here. Um, nah, pretty good. Pretty good. Just chipping away. Um, stuck into preseason now, and um, I'm just getting onto my rehab now. I dislocated my kneecap a few weeks ago, so mm. I've just been busy with that. But now, nah, just chipping away. I I need to ask now. How did you dislocate your kneecap? Um, nah, it was a unit session, and we were mauling, and the mole spun a bit weird. Um. My leg got stuck, and then um, yeah, one thing led to another, and the knee kept popped out. And so as I hit the ground, it popped back in. So I was quite lucky that um, it wasn't out for too long. So yeah, I'm oh, not. That just sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not one of the better feelings, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's all right. How long for the return? The return process, roughly. Uh, at this stage, uh, so. At, at the time of injury, they told me eight to ten weeks, so uh, probably another six, seven weeks. You get stuck at right in the mid- middle of the Super Rugby season anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So um, I'm just glad I don't have to get surgery or anything and I can just get on to my rehab. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a big bonus. Um, I was going to say first question, but we've already kind of done some questions, but we always ask our, our guests that's just to get the ball rolling. What actually yeah. got you into rugby in the first place? Um, so yeah, um, I was born in the Netherlands, uh, in um, Kestrikum, a little village about twenty k from from Amsterdam. Um, and everyone in the Netherlands is really into football. Um, unfortunately, my my talents <laughs> didn't lay lay around football, so um. Um, I like the more physical side of uh, of sports, and um, so I picked up judo at first. Did a bit of judo, which is like a uh, for the ones who don't know, it's just like a wrestling, fighting um, kind of sport. And then um, that was like my summer sport, but I wanted to pick up something in the winter. And um, through like this like special program, I got in touch with rugby and. That's how it kind of started at like the age of six years old. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nobody really put, puts like a martial art and rugby together, even though it makes perfect sense because that it works on your rucking and your mulling and even tackle technique. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, yeah, it was like looking back on it, it kind of complements each other quite well. And um, yeah, I absolutely love both of it. Um, so whenever we have like some sort of wrestle training, I'm um, always quite interested in, in having a good time. But yeah, mostly rugby at the moment. <laughs> no, that's good. Um, obviously, you mentioned you, you are from the Netherlands. What was the biggest challenge actually moving across to New Zealand in the first place? Um, probably leaving my family. So I have a little brother and sister who are both 17 years old. Um, uh, and mom and dad, um, they all live in the Netherlands. Um, well, they used to. Now my brother has moved over to New Zealand as well to play to play rugby, so that's pretty cool. But um, at that stage, I was 16 years old when I when I left, and that was my first time uh, getting out of the house and and moving out and experiencing something new. So um, that was probably the hardest thing. Um, moving to New Zealand, yeah. That's cr- 16, and you and yourself. Yeah. Oh no, I, no! My mum and dad would not let that happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, um, it's good that mum was quite um quite supportive. When you when your little son says that um you have a dream to go to the other side of the world to chase a black jersey, that's um not something every mum wants to hear. But um my mum was real supportive and um and dad as well. So yeah, it was pretty cool. No, no, that's great. And I love the fact that your parents have been very supportive because that's that's the main thing. 
I did read, I did read that your aim was to be the first Dutch all black. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the that's the dream. It's always aim high and yeah, it's um no, that's that's eventually the dream. Yeah, I'm never saying ever because I mean all we, we your name is raving right now as like ones to watch and like bright stars and bright futures oh. right and, and all that. Yeah, so quite a lot, very yeah. lucky to have you. <laughs> before you take off yeah <laughs> totally. yeah absolutely yeah oh it's hard to yeah i guess it's at that stage you just want to well, i'm just trying to take it step by step and um do whatever i can to one um rehab my knee right and then um go well for the harness and and i just don't try to make uh, let it all overwhelm me it's quite easy to uh, have that happening so yeah. yeah just take it day by day and everything exactly. will be all good yeah <laughs> what actually drew you to New Zealand in the first place because obviously like we have rugby in the northern hemisphere so you could have done the UK you could have done France potentially so what what drew you to New Zealand um so uh when I was a little kid my first um my first game that I watched was uh, either 2010 or 2009, uh, Wills against New Zealand in Northern Hemisphere Tour. And, um, and I just watched the Haka and, and the way the, the All Blacks played and and the cohesion within the team and, and the brotherhood. And um, as a little kid, you don't really... Um, you don't really notice that kind of stuff, but it was just something special about that jersey. And um, since then, my dream was always to to be a part of that and um, to hopefully wear the jersey one day. No, that's fair. I love that. And who didn't who didn't love watching the hacker growing up? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I was I was standing as a little Dutch kid um, with my top off, trying to mimic it. <laughs> you can imagine how that goes. But yeah. No. Um, yeah, that was pretty awesome. I can't judge because there has been times I've done the hacker in my house, so I can't <laughs> <judge>. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, we've got a few fan questions and one from a current teammate, but they want to remain anonymous, so there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. we'll start with the fan questions. Um, it's from the Black Jersey. He asked, have you learned any odd expression of Justin Marshall? Because did you... Did you learn English through commentary? Yeah, I did actually. Yeah, so um, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, so my the way I learned English um, was through through the rugby game. So my dad would always download, not um, very legally, but would always download download the Super Rugby games um, after the weekends, and we would spend the whole week watching a game every evening and um well we always had the commentary on and that's how i've learned my first english words so my first english words were probably um boom fire from from, from <laughs> just <Justin Marshall. laughs> i will be sitting on the couch screaming uh screaming boom fire, and my dad mom and dad would go crazy and <laughs> would be like what the hell is going on here but um yeah yeah i learned english through um through the commentary yeah that's very impressive. Maybe not the first word being Boomfa, but yeah, the, the, the rest. Yeah, yeah learning, exactly. Learning, yeah. learning from commentaries. Fair fair play, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, what Jersey's came in with another question. He's asked, why did you move from Christchurch Boys to Point Dunedin? Um, good question. Yeah, so um when I came when I was 16 to Christchurch, I attended Christchurch Boys for two years absolutely loved it um they took me in um it's like um one of their own is like a it's like a family um i stayed at a few uh, families there and then i went into the hostel which was a pretty awesome experience um and then uh, coming back to the question um i guess when when the time was there to make a decision of where uh where I went and the opportunity that laid the Hollanders. Um, when I went down there to have a look around, they just um, 
dug up all this in information about about me um all the way back to when i was um six years old starting to play rugby in the netherlands and uh, that really impressed me and i found that real special um that they took the time to to go so back so deeply back in the archives um um to find stuff like that um which really made me feel at home in the first place and yeah kind of that's what drifted me towards the homeless and um and their philosophy so yeah that, that was um yeah, I hope that answers the question a bit. You know, definitely, I like that because you don't you don't really hear much about clubs doing a lot of digging just to just to get you in the door. Usually, they do that once you've had a milestone for the club. So it's, it's good that they did that from the word go. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome, mate. Right? Yeah, um, yeah, even yeah, like moments like signing for the home nurse. Um, those are the special moments, and I had mum and dad on the phone. Um, yeah, they that organization always treated me like family and, and took me in like family and um that's the way it feels like they're done and done at the moment. So Good. yeah. Um obviously growing up in the Netherlands, is there any rugby players that you inspired to be or or wanted to be like? Uh yes, yeah, definitely. So of course, um I had a few peers back in the Netherlands uh, that I grew up with that you always play footy with and you learn from each other. But looking, um, watching games um, here in New Zealand, you know, I was, um, believe it or not, I used to play first five. So uh, <laughs> I always loved, loved the DC, of course. And um, when I when I moved to Lock, um yeah, Brody Retellick is someone that um, I um, um, love watching and, um, and um, yeah, probably trying to mimic my game a little bit towards. Um, but yeah, he's he's a massive, um, he's someone I massively uh, aspire, I, I guess. Yeah. 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 Very, yeah. very cool choices. Two legends of the game. Yeah. That kind of leads me into my next question now, actually. Yeah. So we'll have you start. Do you prefer playing four or five? I don't think there's much of a difference, but uh, um uh depends a bit. Um I guess I don't really mind either one. I, I okay. both I both love them. It's just um at as a tight Often the tight head lock, so it's number five, is often a bit heavier because it comes with a bit more pressure on that side of the scrum. Okay. But I don't really mind. I love both of them, yeah. I'm not too bothered. Right, no, the reason I asked was because, so we're going to have you starting at second row, and you can pick your second row partner. You get one from the present and one from the past. And they could be anyone in world rugby. <laughs> oh, wow. Um... <laughs> Uh, probably someone from the past that I would love to play with as a second rower is um, Victor Metfield. We love uh, Victor. From... We've actually had Victor on the show, so good choice. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From, uh, like from from what I've heard, um, his line out IQ and um. And how he how he looks at the game and um how he designed lineouts um was very very special and yeah i would love to kind of pick his brain and um and take a few golden nuggets up and then um i guess from the present um yeah it would be um it would be a real cool opportunity to play um with someone like um brody one day um mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've, yeah, I've had the experience of playing with a few very good locks already, like Josh Dixon from the Harmless or Josh Lord, who plays for the Chiefs. Um, played with him during his young 20s. Um, so, yeah, but probably would tell us definitely up there. Again, two very solid packs because, I mean, they've won like, what, three World Cups between them? Something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Victor... Definitely one, one, and 
I can't remember Already. if Rosie's got one or two. That's my that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah, nah. No, I've... A lot a lot of success, either way. <laughs> yeah. A lot, yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. Uh, okay. final final question before we go into a little something different. Um, main aim for the upcoming season. Um, um for us as a for me, first to get my knee right. That's the that's the first step, and then um, performing well with the Hollanders. Um, I feel like we have a real we have a real tight group this year. Um, um, boys are looking real sharp, and I think we can um, definitely um, shock the world a little bit um, and um, play some good Hollands footy. So. Yeah, good. The, the, good. Look for, I look forward to I love watching Super Rugby. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to watch over here sometimes, but it's, it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're gonna go into something a little bit different now. This is getting to know you as a person, so it's not really yeah. anything rugby related. Yeah, yeah. No, that's all right. Um, cats or dogs? Uh dogs. Yeah, I don't know why I keep yeah. that. I'm very surprised <laughs> you know, says cats. So yeah, no, I had a dog myself. So uh, when I was growing up, so yeah, dogs definitely. Yeah, definitely dogs. Good choice. Um, do you have any tattoos? Yes, I do have one. Yeah, uh, a recent one, uh, just on the side of my uh, yeah, of my body. So all right, cool. Yeah, what is it? It's uh, it's in Dutch writing. It's uh, it's like a. Uh, it's uh, it's like a little prayer, but I'm right. not religious. But right, yeah. my mom, something always my mom used to say. So, yeah. Fair enough. Do you plan on getting any more tattoos or? Uh, yes, I am actually. Uh, uh, my mates Connor Garden Bishop, who has a few, and in Kimura with the para para, who has a few as well. They um, they kind of got me into it um, and got me hooked. So, planning to get one with my mom. And um, probably one with my brother and sister. So yeah, we'll just have to nice. have a look. The only reason I ask is because I've I've got a good few tattoos, so I like, <laughs> I like hearing all the other stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what is your current? What are you currently binge watching on Netflix, or what do you recommend for people to watch? <laughs> um, I am actually rewatching. All of Outer Banks. So the Outer Banks season three is coming in February. So I'm just making sure I'm re-watching season one and two so I know what's uh, what the build-up is to season three. Um yeah. I, don't think we, I don't know if we, even if we have that over here, but we'll try. Oh really? No, nah, you should should watch it. It's pretty good. It's called um yeah, Outer Banks. And otherwise, um a good like I don't know how many times I've already watched Friends, but I watched it about seven times. <laughs> so it's a it's, nice one to do for the eighth. It's, you don't even need to watch it half the time. You can just have it on in the background and do whatever yeah, exactly. you're doing. I don't really know exactly. what's happening. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's your favourite film? Um, probably The Hitman's Bodyguard. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, from, from oh, Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. yeah. Hitman's Bodyguard is real good, yeah. All Samuel. I remember was the bus scene. Hey? I remember just the bus scene full of nuns and Samuel Jackson starts singing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, nah, it, um, it's played in Amsterdam as well, so that makes it a bit more special. But yeah, it cracks me up every time I watch it. Eh? So like that weird blend between comedy and action. Like, it's, like some of the yeah, fights, yeah. Like, that's brutal. And then Ryan Reynolds being Ryan Reynolds will say yeah. something. And yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, and no, I love it. Um, if there was going to be a film on your life, who would play you in the film? Oh, um, um, I don't know the actor's name, um, but um, I've been called um, what's the guy's name from Happy Gilmore? Um, Adam Sandler. Uh, is Adam Sandler the, the main no, one? Not, uh, not Adam Sandler, but the, have you seen the movie Happy Gilmore? Yeah, not for a while though. 
Oh, it's the guy with the nail on his head. Uh, Miss Larson. <laughs> Miss Larson would probably um I would would probably play me in a in a movie somewhere. Yeah. Fair enough. What what a unique what a unique answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's an inside joke because um Brett Weber and Garrett Evans um they play at the same uh footy club here in Dunedin. And they always call me Miss Larson, just the way I'm like, <laughs> it'll look like, I guess. And uh, I run, so it's a bit of a running joke, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Larson would play me. Proper, yeah. class, proper classic pick there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Where is your dream vacation? So you've got two weeks off just to enjoy. Where, where, where are you going to enjoy? Um... I would probably love to go to the Caribbean one time or um, Bali. Yeah. yeah seems, that seems tropical. a popular answer. Yeah. Yeah. Something tropical. Good choice. Because who doesn't love <laughs> the good weather? Nobody wants the rain. Got to get a bit of a tan on this Dutch skin. So um, <laughs> still <laughs> <pasty>. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what is your go-to post-match drink or social drink? So you, you get a big win, you and the boys are out for a drink, what are you drinking? Um, nah, probably um, probably like my Spade Summit, um, which is like the local, I guess the local brewery here in Dunedin. Um, but as it gets later at night and... Um, you start to get tired. The Red Bull Vodka goes goes quite well. <laughs> Just because you need some caffeine and you need to need to stay up. But um, that's only if we have like um, reason to stay up. Otherwise, um, not just a normal spade summit. Yeah, no, that's that's good. I like the I like the variety. So you're going <laughs> good there. Yeah, exactly. Um, what is your favorite? I say like food cuisine, like style of food. Yeah, yeah, no, um. I love sushi. Eh? I'm I'm a real, real big sucker for sushi. So Japanese, raw fish, anything, anything around that area. Nah, yeah, that's, nah. that's you, can have, yeah. you could have my share as well because nah. <laughs> you, you 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 learn to appreciate it once you hear it, once you're down here because the fish um, that gets catched here is um insane. So yeah, I wasn't a big fan either when I first came down, but yeah, it's unreal. Fair enough. I've got another controversial one for you. <laughs> yeah. Does does pineapple belong on pizza? Yes, absolutely. No oh, doubt. No, no, no. <laughs> no. I love a pizza Hawaii. It's um one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, it definitely per, does. Per show. Per show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, so wait, um, do, yeah. do you do pineapple on burgers? Uh I never had it before I came to New Zealand. Yeah. And I actually don't mind it. <laughs> I thought you were going to be different because every time, <laughs> we get, every time we get Aussies or Kiwis on, they say pineapple on pizza and pineapple on a hamburger. And I'm like, right, we need to try and break this mold. And <laughs> you're, you're from the Northern Hemisphere, but they've, they've broke you. <laughs> pineapple just goes well with everything, I reckon. I'm, I'm a big pineapple fan, so... I mean, fair, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Final question. Uh, no. Um, do you have any hobbies away from rugby? Um. Yes, I. Um, I'd love to say that I do a wee bit of surfing, but I haven't been out for a while. <laughs> um. Uh. Now, nah, me and my mates often go to the beach, go for a swim there. Um, and yeah, I guess just a little bit of um, trooping around in Dunedin, doing a bit of sightseeing and stuff. That's that's kind of my thing. Yeah. Nice. What do, what do you recommend if if we were if I was to fly to Dunedin tomorrow? What would you recommend yeah. that I go and see first? Um, probably Smells Beach. It's okay. um. It's like oh, it probably doesn't say much, but it's one of the most more prettier beach or or tunnel beach. And then um, 
And then a classic would be Signal Hill. Um, the boys run on Signal Hill um, during preseason, um, which is um, quite demonizing because you just <laughs> you just put yourself in a hole for about an hour and then you end up on the top of a hill. <laughs> um, yeah, Signal Hill would be uh, you would be able to look over the whole city, which is pretty awesome. So that does sound pretty good. Yeah. Final final question for you today. One thing yes. you like. One thing you'd like to be remembered for. Um, one thing you'd like to be remembered more uh, for. Probably family man. Um, yeah, I love love my family and um, I care for the people who are real close to me and yeah, that's probably something I would be want to be remembered for. Good. I like. Yeah, no, I like that. I'm- Family, family is the most important thing. I don't care what people say. It's just, yeah, they're the people that back you, or that should back you most more than anyone. Yeah. So yeah, but the laptop is now closed. You've absolutely smashed it. <laughs> Not it's, awesome, right? I had a great it's time. Been a blast. You are our first Dutch Kiwi, as I could call you that. I think. Yeah, I saw you did. Um, you said you did one of my mates before, Linda. Oh, uh, Linda, yeah, yeah, plays yeah. For, for Exeter. Yeah, yeah, she's one of. I like, play for the same club as her. Back oh, home. Nice. She's yeah. good. Yeah, she's real nice. Um, she's, a, she's like proper one. The a Dutch rugby to just take off and burst. I think she actually mentioned you in an interview. Without, oh, did without, she? Without saying your name, she was like, "Oh, there's there's a young guy down in New Zealand to turn it up," and I was, "All right, cool." And then I think it might be uh, she either did, she either said your name or kind of like hinted round at being you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Dutch, you kind of pronounce my name a bit different. You you pronounce it as Fabian, which is when English people hear that, they're like, "Who the fuck is that guy?" Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, nah. Um, She's she's real nice and she's a really good rugby player as well. Mm. Yeah, um, we, we kind of talked about just Dutch rugby because obviously it's not very rugby or, orientated. So when you do see somebody from the Netherlands break out, yeah. it's kind of special to talk about because the only ones I could have mentioned was I think I said it to Linda was herself, you, and Tim Visser, obviously because I'm Scottish. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah not. Nah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He would have known him from he would have yeah, he's he's like when he came first onto the scene, every Dutch kid wanted to be like him, including me. Um yeah, I remember watching him for Edinburgh and then Harder Queens, Scotland. Yeah. yeah. No, he's he's also nice. Where where in Scotland are you from? Um about an hour from Edinburgh. Just give or oh, take. Yeah. yeah. That's the easiest way to I'm from Fife, but I live right between I don't know how big you are on golf. So I'm like right between St. Andrews and Edinburgh. It's about the same distance apart. Yeah. So yeah, awesome. that's, that's the best way I could describe it. If you don't if yeah. you don't know the country well. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Fabian, thank you so much for agreeing to come on. It's been an absolute blast. Hopefully your knee gets sorted very, very soon and we can see you tear up in Super Rugby. And then yeah. Yeah. you know what? Hopefully in the future we you get that dream of wearing that famous black jersey. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. And no worries. Check. Welcome. A lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, glad, I'm glad you enjoyed it. You're welcome back anytime. Cheers, mate. This, Have a good has, been the final, this has been the final whistle with Fabian Holland. We'll see you next time.